we last ended off was in Kickleman Creek campground. Uh, so we were still in Canada at this point, uh, not too far from the border actually. And this was after uh, an epic day through the Flathead Valley. Well, you could take that route or you could take an easier route um, down through Fernie. And if you have the Adventure Cycling maps, you'll see those two options. One's a, a yellow highlighted line and then one's a, a long uh, red highlighted line. And of course, if you haven't got those maps, I highly encourage you to get them, but we will have copies for everyone. And uh, either way, you're not gonna get lost, but it's uh, good, valuable research to do beforehand. Okay, so Kickman Creek on Lake Kukanusa. Uh, the day is very straightforward. It's our shortest day. It's only about 57 kilometers. And most of it is gonna be on paved roads, if not all of it. Um, the main challenge, if anything today, is crossing over the US border, <laughs> border at uh, Rooseville. So that will happen pretty early in the morning. And kind of depending on how much we like the campsite, um, I think I mentioned in the previous video that um, Kickhaman Creek is gonna be a new one for us. Um, if we like it, you know, maybe we don't stress leaving too early in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, a lake there, so. Yeah, and we finish actually on the same lake, uh, just further south. Um, so no rush in the morning, and that's something we can talk about uh, the night before, see how people are feeling, and uh, also gauge how late we all got in. And uh, yeah, then just start making our way down Highway 92, down to the U.S. border. And the way we did it last year is the van um, with all our gear follows us and we just go in two by two at a time. So we go in just like the cars and two people at a time will go up to the border and they'll check your passport. So make sure you have your passport, <laughs> make sure that it is valid, at least for the time that we're traveling and uh, hopefully for a couple months beyond. And uh, yeah, and if you have any arrest warrants or anything like that to let <laughs> us know about, this would definitely be that time. <laughs> yes, no carrying any wacky tobacco or anything like that in <laughs> yeah. your packs. No, Sean and I get left with the van, so... <laughs> and, they, and they will more than likely search it. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> so, I've learned enough about mountain bike riders to know that I have to say this out loud. So <laughs> they will likely search the van. I have no concerns about us getting through. Um, they're really just more curious than anything. They're usually pretty familiar with riders coming through there too. I remember last year the border agents were well aware of the Tour Divide race, so. Uh, yeah, yeah, so on the race, they see all, it's kind of a bottleneck where they see all the racers come through. So it's not an anomaly to talk about what we're doing. Uh, but they will check everyone's passports and from there uh, we'll continue on a side road down back down to uh, Lake Kukanusa. It's a fairly flat road um, and I know I know there's a couple people that are going to be smiling because they know that I have a tendency to um, not play up hills as, as to the degree that they are. But yeah, this is really a, a, a flattish day. You have a couple kind of rolling prairie-ish type hills. Um, and then yeah, an easy finish for the night. Um, we'll take a dip in the lake. Um, really just take it easy. It's our recovery day mm -hmm. after a potentially longer day. Okay, so moving on to the last day of riding. Well, actually, do you have anything to say on support on that? No, there won't be a whole lot of support because it's such a short day. We'll, you know, coordinate something at the border, make sure we all go through at the same time, and yeah, hopefully um, we'll get settled in at the campground at Rexford Bench in Montana on the U.S. side and have lots of time to enjoy the lake and relax. Yeah, so there won't be like designated lunch stops or anything. We'll just pretty well ride all the way through. Um, we could probably actually beat the van there. But with crossing the U.S. border, um, I do want to make sure it gets across with all of our stuff. So we will wait till it gets across and then uh, continue on on our own. How slow do you think we go in that van? <laughs> well, as we've learned from the last year, um, taking down all the tents and preparing meals, um, 
which packing might the van, all that. Yeah, and more so on that day, packing the van and taking down all the tents. Um, actually, takes a fair amount of time, um, even with two people. Um, so that's why, that's why we could potentially okay. beat them. Then. Fair enough. <laughs> Okay, so the last day, um, it is going to be the longest for the whole group. So if you did the Flathead Valley, that will be your longest day. Um, this day will be very kind of similar in the fact that it will be um, remote. Um, you'll have a couple mountain passes to cross. And essentially it's uh, 163 kilometers. Um, we start the first couple hours in civilization and we'll have one meetup with the van. We found a really good spot last year. Mm -hmm. And then what we end up doing is um, we end up going over the Continental Divide. Um, at this point it's called the Whitefish Divide. And during the day we go up and over it. It's a very long, steep climb. Descend down it, another long, steep descent. So always while you're doing this, think, well, if it's really long going up, it's probably going to be really long going down. Mm -hmm. um, and then once we get on the other side of the mountain pass, we're pretty well on our own. Um, there is one town that we can get to if we have any problems. And uh, some of the more ambitious riders found it last year because they uh, thought they knew all the directions. <laughs> um, but otherwise, yeah, we won't see the vehicle pretty well until the end in Whitefish Bike Retreat. Mm -hmm. So we go up and over the Whitefish Divide once, um, very scenic, um, it's one of my favorite days. And then um, on the back side of it for a little bit and then we go up and over it again, um, very similar gradient. And we're talking like, you know, a couple hours to get up and even, you know, an hour or two to get down. I think the descent from the top of the Whitefish Divide, the last time we go up it, down all the way to the Whitefish Biker Tree, it's a good 45 kilometers. So it's, uh, it's a long time to be going down, okay? <laughs> and uh, there's a really neat um, scenic lake up top called Red Meadow Lake. We'll definitely stop there and take some pictures and uh, possibly get some water. And uh, if you saw the pictures from last year, that's a kind of an infamous spot where the group kind of started to get fragmented and I was with a couple of riders that were a little low on fuel and one of the park rangers gave uh, well, Russ and a couple of us uh, rice and of course we don't have any <laughs> utensils or anything and they just put it in our hands so it was hand rice was uh, <laughs> what it became known as. Yeah. Um, Hopefully it won't get to that this year. <laughs> yes, yes. Lots of picture opportunities um, but once we commit to that day there's no uh, uh, shuttle options to back out of it. And that is definitely a day that, um, you know, I really want us to challenge ourselves but also to support each other and uh, to make sure we all just enjoy it and uh, get through it. Because we'll more than likely, well, we will have to stop for water um, at a river. Um, so there's going to be a lot of new things for some people, uh, especially if they haven't done a lot of camping. And of course, we'll carry all the supplies, you just got to carry all the water bottles. Um, but basically at the bottom of the descent is the Whitefish Retreat. Um, it's owned by Cricket Butler. She's a Tour Divide veteran and she knows the area um, really well. We'll get in later on the Thursday night. Um, could, be, could be very well pitch black. Um, could be dusk. But you all the while while you're riding know that you're riding towards a bed, uh, showers. Heaven. Yeah, full full amenities. It's a very very nice place, mm -hmm. and uh, Sarah and Sana will have been there pretty well the whole day, and we'll have a meal all ready to go for us, and you won't have to sleep in a tent that night. Mm -hmm. uh, on the Friday, um, there's going to be lots of different options as far as what we can do, and uh, we'll talk more about it uh, probably the morning of. But basically you can go on a tour around Whitefish Lake, so go on a bike ride on some nice single track. Um, we can shuttle somewhere else, but we'll stay local and just really explore the area. Uh, maybe go into Whitefish and check out a coffee shop or two. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just really just relax and celebrate the big ride that we had. Uh, so that's Friday. And then, um, yeah, and I'll try to coordinate a tour with the Hammer guys, um, if any of them are around. So we'll go check out that location uh, for anyone that wants to. Check out the main warehouse. 
And then on Saturday, we shuttle back to Calgary. Um, and I know there's a couple riders that are taking care of their own um, their own rides. Um, Cricket will be shuttling a couple of you to the airport in Kalispell. Um, otherwise, we'll be leaving pretty early, headed back to uh, Calgary, the Calgary International Airport. And it's probably going to take anywhere between six or seven hours. Um, I'm budgeting a little more on the higher end, um, I think, when I talked about coordinating flights. Only because we learned last year that uh, five minutes pee breaks here and there and snack breaks turn into 15 minutes uh, very quickly. Um, one unique thing I'm going to try to tack on, um, I haven't done the drive myself yet, I'm still learning about it, but um, there is a way that we can drive back through Glacier National Park and if we can make that happen I think that would be yeah. really unique otherwise we're actually backtracking a lot of um, the route through Fernie as we head back up into British Columbia and Alberta and then over to Calgary. But uh, yeah, I would say it's probably going to be in that six to seven hour um, range getting back. Anything else, Sarah? No, I think that's it. That covers it. All right. Well, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, the crew is really excited. We're going to be getting together on uh, May 24th uh, weekend here for a little crew retreat and uh, mm -hmm. kind of go over last minute details. Uh, I'm in the phase right now where I'm booking a lot of things, um, campsites, um, working on insurance and vehicles and uh, really just starting to ramp up the one-on-one -on -one conversations with people and uh, yeah, you'll see more details in group emails coming out here soon. Mm -hmm. All right, that's it guys. Um, as always, if you have more questions, um, feel free to email me or call me. Um, let's make this happen. All right. Sounds good.